poetry example number two is going to be today. Um, yeah, but we're doing a little bit of like a little mini kind of um, back lesson first on figurative language because our poem today or our poem type today is about riddles and it involves um, use of figurative language. So here is a quick review of figurative language. Okay, so figurative language. Okay, so there's many different types. Similes is one type, and this is where you compare two things that do not normally have similar qualities using the words like or as. The next thing is a metaphor, and a metaphor is similar to a simile in that we're also comparing two things um, that usually are not compared, but we're not using the words like or as. So this, a metaphor, is a more direct comparison. Usually it's using the words is, um, like, or are kind of thing, like something that's more direct than like or as. If it's like or as, automatically a simile um, is, or was would be a metaphor. Okay, the next one is a hyperbole, or sometimes you might you might hear it as a hyperbole, but hyperbole is technically the correct way to pronounce it. So a hyperbole is an exaggeration, something that is not true but sounds very impressive. We'll be going through examples of these later. Personification is next. So a personification, the root word of personification is person, right? Person. So it's when you're giving person-like qualities or human-like qualities to something that's not human, like an object or, yeah, usually it's an object. So not even, that uh, could be an animal, I guess, like the bird sang, but I guess a bird kind of can sing or like, yeah. Usually it's just something that like is an object rather than like a living thing, but you definitely give it human-like qualities, like the trees danced, right? Like that, yeah, personification, because trees don't actually dance. They look like they're dancing by the wind. Okay, another one is an alliteration. So an alliteration is, the way that I remember this one is it's a l -l 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 alliteration. So it's kind of like a repetition of consonants that start at the word. So consonants, right? Maybe we have vowels and consonants. So a consonant, vowels are like A, E, I, O, U, and then sometimes Y. Consonant is like the rest of the letters, right? So this one, repetition of consonants at the start of a word. So yeah, alliteration would be, um, or like Sally sells seashells by the seashore. That is, even though it's, kind of, yeah, that's a repetition of consonants because it's Sally, right? S would be the word or the consonant, the letter that is continuously repeated at the beginning of a word, like a tongue twister. Okay, the next one is an idiom. We're going to be spending more time on idioms um, a little bit later after we're kind of like done our poetry unit, um, but they're pretty fun. Idioms are basically a phrase that cannot be understood um, in the meaning of its separate words. So I'll show you an example, but like um, it doesn't make sense by itself. Like if you were to separate the two parts of the sentences, you're like, what is this even saying? This doesn't even make sense at all. But then it's like a phrase that is, um, that makes sense. Uh, it's, and they're kind of meant to be a little bit funny. So we'll go through some examples of those. The last one, I think last one is automatopoeia, or maybe a couple more that we're gonna go over. Automatopoeia is a fun one. Basically, it's sound effects. So the use of words that make sounds like crash, boom, bang, splat. Um, those are examples of automatopoeias. Okay, now we're doing the examples of them. So similes, comparing, again, reminder, compares two things which are like or as. So the leaf was as brown as butter, okay? Normally, we wouldn't compare a leaf and butter, right? They're two things that we wouldn't typically compare. But in this case, we're saying, yeah, the leaf, they're comparing the color of the leaf to butter. I guess maybe burnt butter. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, butter is not usually brown. Metaphor, this one is we're comparing two things without using the word like or as. So a metaphor is a more direct comparison. Usually, the, usually, usually we're using the word is. 
<laughs> my husband is a rock okay so that means like he's not actually a rock it means that he's like solid and stable and that she feels like she can go to him and um like he's gonna be solidly there like a rock so it's a nice thing the next one is a hyperbole which is an exaggeration okay what do you think this one is the girl was so hungry she ate a million sandwiches okay so unlikely like not it's an exaggeration right that isn't actually the case if you say well what if she actually did eat 100 million sandwiches okay the what ifs for um for like hyperboles like words they don't work if you kind of do the what if thing then and the correct answer is hyperbole uh yeah it can be confusing so just think of like this is very 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 <laughs> unlikely maybe there's a one percent chance but like for most people it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a thing okay so that is a hyperbole the next one is personification so this is when you're giving human qualities to something that's non-human okay the moon danced across the night sky oh similar to the one that i just said about the trees dancing okay yeah so the moon danced across the night sky the moon wouldn't typically dance yeah okay or another one could be like uh the grass the grass or no mm, uh, i want to say something like bowed the um maybe like the trees bowed in the wind so if they're kind of like bending over they might be like bowing kind of thing okay alliteration so this is the repetition it's like a tongue twister right okay the hungry hippo ate happily yeah those are scary animals hippos by the way they can like actually eat like a lot of things in a one single swallow it's creepy so the hungry hippo ate happily is a or an alliteration there we go tongue twister okay next one is an automatopoeia what is this one again sound effects right so words that make a sound crash boom pow splat shh could be all examples what else could you think of there you go Okay, idioms. Now these ones, we're not gonna do any work on idioms today. This is just like a, yeah, it's a, I guess like a, an introduction. So an idiom, oh yeah, okay, here we go. You're barking up the wrong tree. Okay, so it's a phrase that shows not, like it's not, an idiom isn't meant to be taken literally. So you're barking up the wrong tree. It's not like the dog is actually like barking up like he should be barking up this tree instead of this tree. Like that's not really what it means. It means you're asking the wrong person. So say someone's like, you're begging your mom um, to have like, I don't know, ice cream after dinner. She's just like, you're barking up the wrong tree. Like kind of like, you know, I'm like, whatever you're asking of me, it's not gonna happen, like go somewhere else. So that's what that idiom phrase means. We'll be doing these later though. All right. Next one is, oh yeah. Okay, this is fun. <laughs> oh yeah we'll learn about abstinence later Seems to sit somewhere separate from Sonia. A Caleb calls Chris because he's coming to California. It's called alliteration. That's what occurs when you got the same sound at the start of every word. But when you got a vowel sound that keeps sounding the same, that's a figure called assonance. Yeah, that's his name. It's what I'm trying to define by providing this example. But I cannot deny that assonance could be a handful. Okay, we're not going to do assonance. It's not exactly what you say. But there you go. That's Personification, alliteration, 
<laughs> a simile is something that you use to compare two unrelated things with an element that's shared. My mind is like an ocean, it's as smooth as jazz, but it's only a simile if it uses like that. Yes, like her eyes. It's similar, but watch out. Be careful, cause you got to leave like an ass out. My mind is an ocean, my words are a river. So keep your ears open as I continue to deliver. Sometimes what you need is not exactly what you say. Now with the sun smiling down or the boat hug the shore, that's personification, nothing less, nothing more, but with the buzz or a ding or a hiss or a roar, that's on a monopoeia that we're using for sure. Hyperbole? Man, that's like a million times harder. Take something true, then exaggerate it way farther. Now you've heard this song from beginning to the finish, now you've got some tools to draw your literary image. Sometimes what you mean is not exactly what you say. Yeah. Okay. Pause that guy there. Okay, good. There you go. So hopefully that was good and helpful for you to know. Um, yeah, we don't, we're not going to learn assonance because... Yeah, it's like more for junior high. But anyway, now you kind of know what it is, which is just repetition of, do you remember? It's when you have a vowel in the middle of a word that repeats itself. So it's, I guess, similar to an alliteration. Um, yeah, but just like a little bit different. Not as common, it's much harder to use. That's why we don't really do it now. Um, okay, so poetry. Oh, this is not example dos. Okay, we are doing riddle poems today. Okay. So, um, all right, so riddle poems use an example or use um, a figurative language in a way to represent a familiar item, but in kind of like a new way, kind of like a riddle or like a, I, yeah, like a riddle, something you have to problem solve. So common ones to use are metaphor, simile, hyperbole, and an analogy. Analogy, remember that's where it's like, um, we did those earlier in the year. It's like head is to hat as hand is to glove. So we were kind of like making a comparison to two different things. Okay, so the purpose, here we go. Riddle poems force writers to represent everyday items by becoming creative with figurative language, mainly these ones, but you could use other ones if you want. In order to describe an item in a way that provides clues about the actual item without revealing the identity entirely. So it's kind of like with our evidence and investigation unit a little bit. Okay, so again, here's just a couple of quick examples. So a simile, you're using the word like or as. The man was as big as a mountain, okay? Um, biking up the hill was like climbing Everest, okay? There you go. A metaphor is using typically the words is or was, so it's a more direct comparison of two things that are normally not similar. My brother is a teddy bear. Um, my When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Okay, so sometimes there is no, there is no is or was. Um, using the bitterness of lemons to highlight the situation being unfortunate. So that's what's happening in this one. That one's, that one's trickier to use, but it's basically they've compared two things again, right? Life and then lemons, they've compared those. So that would be um, comparing two unlike things in a direct way. Again, if it uses like or as, it's automatically a simile. And then usually is and was makes a metaphor, but sometimes not. But I don't think you're gonna have any of those. Okay, hyperbole, remember this is an exaggeration. So I was so hungry I could eat a cow, okay? Not likely, 99% chance not likely. There must be a million people waiting in line. Yeah, there could be, but like that's an exaggeration like 99% of the time. Um, it looks like you spent a fortune on the new watch. Maybe they did. Maybe they bought a Rolex and it was $40,000, like 120,000 dirhams and I actually spent a fortune. 
Um, but, you know, for like the sake of figurative language, you just have to think to like the 99% of the time or even 90% of the time, what do they mean? If you do the crazy what ifs, then you'll be led in like most likely the wrong direction. Okay, an analogy. This is okay. This one wasn't in the review from earlier, but um, we have done this a little bit. So a comparison using two dissimilar things that goes on longer in order to highlight more than one similar quality. Okay. So, okay. So it, again, it's just like more of like an actual phrase than just like a one sort of sentence. So life is like a box of chocolates. Okay, there you go. That would be a simile, but now we're getting a little bit more complex. Sometimes you will choose uh, choose one from the box, expecting it to be delicious. Something that has like, I would choose like a mocha one or something or dark chocolate. And it turns to be a flavor that you hate. I would hate it if it had a cherry in the middle. I thought it was gonna be mocha. Sometimes the chocolate looks like the most uh, plain turns out to be the most delicious. Yeah, like maybe it just has like, I don't know, like it is just, you didn't think it was gonna be that great, but it is. Then sometimes you eat too much chocolate and you start feeling sick. Okay, there you go. That's an analogy. So those of you, that's from Forrest Gump. Um, yeah, so you never, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. And sometimes it is gonna turn out to be way better than you thought. Sometimes it's gonna be, turn out to be way worse than kind of what you thought. So yeah, that's what it's telling us about life, right? You never really know. Um, okay, I'm just gonna kind of, yeah, go through this one. Okay, so now this is where it gets a little bit fun. Okay, so you have to create a riddle poem that describes a common household item without saying what it is, okay? Or I guess something that most people would be familiar with, like not some obscure thing, like an easy, an easy thing for people to get. So for example, okay, I am soft like a cloud. So there we have a simile. Um, I can be beautiful like a peacock or plain as a chicken. Okay, hmm, so we have, all right. Next, I'm a supportive friend, okay? So we're using a, ah, but is it actually a friend? No, right? It's not actually a friend. We're using the figurative language to say something in a different way, so it's not actually a friend. Um, I lounge on couches like a lazy cat. Okay, so now we're getting a bit more of a clue. Hmm, that was a pretty good clue, actually. Some people have a million of me. Some people have none. There is a hyperbole. Okay, probably wouldn't actually, 99% of people wouldn't actually have a million. I can be big like a car or small like a sandwich. Haha, <laughs> okay. They even use a little bit of an alliteration there too. Small like a sandwich. A simile. What am I? Okay, what do you think? All right, you know what? I am going to leave you guys there. Ah! I don't know why it does this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave you there in suspense. And I want to see if you guys can make a comment below on what you think this riddle item is. And then your task for today is to write a riddle poem using the um yeah using the tips that were in this so again on your page um writing down the rules of the riddle poem okay so basically you're describing a normal household object without giving away what it is you're revealing its identity little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit using what simile like her ass metaphor more direct comparison or, you know what, in this one they didn't actually even use an analogy because that was like a little bit longer because an analogy is kind of like an extended um, simile anyway. Or a hyperbole, right? So hyperbole um, is like the exaggeration. And they even snuck in a little alliteration in here. How nice. Okay, so see if you can take a guess at what you think our item is. And then I would love for you to write one too. And we will be compiling your written final works of any of these types of poems. So it's gonna be a choice board again. I'm slowly unveiling the types, but it's good to practice this riddle type um, for now anyway. And then you can see if you would like to maybe have this as your contribution to our memory book. Okay, there you go. It could be even like, it could, if it's related to kindness, then it could be like a token that like, 
reveals kindness to like, yeah, like what's your symbol of kindness? Could you talk about that by using a riddle? Yeah, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, all right, good job. And remember, please wear your CIS uniforms when we are seeing each other at one o'clock, not two o'clock, one o'clock for our Zoom. Okay, good work.